Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm G.W. Pomacher. Thank you for logging on, tuning in, clicking links, however you got here. Thank you. One more thing, please. Hit subscribe and smash that bell. Come back over and over again. See who we're hanging with. Man, we have authors, artists, filmmakers, musicians, creative minds of all kinds here on the Hanging With Web Show. Right here on HWWS Web TV. We are right now at the O'Galley Artworks Art Festival, and we're hanging out with author Martha Watts. You may know Martha as Auntie Marcella. Okay, and we're going to drop links down below so that you can tie those two things together, and we're going to talk about them a little bit here online. Martha, thank you for coming out and hanging with us. Thank How you are for you? Me. I'm very well. Oh, yeah, thank you. doing good. Doing so well. we met yesterday at Authors for Authors. You were chatting with some readers and talking to some other writers in there. Mm -hmm. um, you are a child to young adult author in these these particular books. Children, yes. Children, Children yes. yes. Seven to twelve. It seven, is seven to twelve. To 12. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. So these are the adventures of Iani. Iani. Mm -hmm. Iani. Okay. Um, and Iani is in iguana. She is. She As is. one should you should know that it's right here. See, um, tell us a little bit about the adventures of Iani. Where did this idea come from? So. I also write educational books. Okay. So in one of my workbooks, I was supposed to put examples in there. So for my K through two students, I had to create stories. And so I just thought of just creating a story with the iguana because the books were for Virgin Island students. Ah. Because principals at that, at, in that setting had asked for the examples. Okay. And so I just wanted to put something together quickly. So I, it was like two pages. And then one day I was sitting at home and I'm like, why don't you develop that into a real story? Very that was cool. way after the book books were published and everything and the kids were using it. I'm like, probably that should work. So I tried. And um, along the way... How cool was that for a student, though, that they had this example in their workbooks mm -hmm. and then not long later they were like, oh, that example is pulled right from a, a exactly. book that they can get. Exactly. That's awesome. Exactly. And I kind of used students what they want for example i'm a sunday school teacher and when i told my students i was working on a book one boy said oh if it's from the islands it only eats coconuts so i'm like okay i need to make sure that Ian is eating other things other than coconuts so then i feature a lot of caribbean fruits and then i'm finding out that adults are reading my book and they're like they're like what is the soursop and what is canip so they actually do some research themselves to find out what these fruits are. So I'm glad that I was able to use a Caribbean setting and to help kids on the mainland or adults who ever read to pretty much understand that we have fruits too. We, it's yeah, just I, not just banana. So we think of banana or, and coconuts. Or, as you say, early European settlers to mm -hmm. the region, and this is a 500-mile a region of the, of the, between the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico mm -hmm. that is the Caribbean islands. Right. Um, when the Europeans first settled there, it was because of the fertile ground. Yes. Because it was, I mean, they had just come from, you know, 3,000 miles of salt water. So That's right. any ground is good ground, but fertile ground is best. That's right. And so there are fruits and, and different, different, different kinds fruits. of, yes. it, that is the heart of, of what we could consider the tropics today exactly. uh, in the Atlantic region. Right. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. They, we mm -hmm. see what we see on sort of the news, the, mm -hmm. the edges of the Caribbean right. that bump exactly. up against you know, U.S. waters. But mm -hmm. we don't actually see all of the islands and all of the life and the rich cultures that are down there. And now you're from the Caribbean. Is yes, that not, I am. Yeah. I'm from Dominica, which is between Guadeloupe and Martinique. Okay. And I lived in the U.S. Virgin Islands, St. Thomas, for about 15 years, so which is close to Puerto Rico. So one of the things for me, one of the hopes that I have for Ian is that she will be able to teach mainland kids more about the Caribbean, not just the U.S. Virgin Islands, but all of the Caribbean in, um, islands in general. Yes. Um, we have lots of fruits. We have other plants. We have, we contributed towards history. I mean, so many things that Caribbean people did that we do not know about. A lot of times when you talk about the Caribbean, people are thinking of Haiti, Jamaica, and Dominican Republic. They know nowhere else, and I'm hoping that Iani can actually. Bring I, I all do those think things. people have an image of, of that region, mm -hmm. uh, and in the in the popular imagination, they think immediately they go to either uh, the tourist destinations mm -hmm. or the third world mm. kind of feel. And there's they don't know there's an in between. Mm -hmm. It's not just this or this. There's, That's right. there's 
our people and cultures and uh, uh, everything from wildlife to you know everything, and everything is mm -hmm. different in in this region. Guys, Johnny Depp is not the only guy that's ever been to the Caribbean. Yeah, right. There's a lot of others too. Mm -hmm. uh, and they weren't pirates, not all of them. That's there right. Was, there, there were a few pirates. That's right. But uh, so, all right, let's talk about Iana. Iani, yes. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two of her adventures here. Mm -hmm. um, let's. Uh, which one is first? So, the Voyage West is first. The Voyage West. I studied West is her. First. We started with her as a teenage girl. She's 12 already. Okay. Um, she is with her friends and. Um, the, the one thing about her is that she, one of the things that she teaches is that we have to pretty much, we can, how would I say, balance what we do. So although she's an adventurous person, they have, she has friends, they don't like to climb, they do not like to swim. And so as a team, there are five girls and one guy, because you know, the iguana, they kind of have one person who has to do the little checking of the girls, making sure that they're fine. So that has to be in there. And so they decide to be, to do what you like first before we kind of separate. So the one thing is that, in other words, if you have a group of kids just normal playing, not because I don't like soccer that I should be left out. Let's do what I like first and then you can move away. So I'm hoping that kids can actually see that it's okay to want your own individual stuff, but we can do things as a group as well. And so that, as a community, that, we have an obligation to do a little bit of what everybody likes. Exactly. Yeah. So friendship. So that whole idea of friendship is there. Then I have the idea that she is, you know, very resilient. She, she, she's independent as a matter of fact. She climbs, she, she's adventurous, she does all of those things. And in there, we kind of bring in the island culture, like the music, um, food. We bring in all the different things that you could find. Um, Something happens to Iani. She actually has an incident where she falls off the tree and lands somewhere that she doesn't normally land because iguanas can fall off at least 40 feet and be fine. Um, yes, but she landed and she did not land on, a, on normal. So she ended up being in something that was not normal. It happens to be a truck. I shouldn't be giving away everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she <laughs> spoilers, up. spoilers. So she they gotta buy the book. Yes. They gotta go down and click the link and buy the book. That's yes. that's the whole idea here. Uh, so, okay. So how about the incredible beginning? Yes. What, so, what, tell us a little bit about this. I'll tell you about the beginning. But what I wanted to show here is that is the resilience. So even if she was in a, a setting that she was not used to, she did not give up. She did not. She did everything that she could to, to make sure that she stayed alive. Persistence. Persistence, resilience, perseverance. So all of these things are in here until she gets to that place. And pretty much it's like having to start over again. But the whole idea is I'm not going to give up as long awesome. as I'm alive. Awesome. And that's what I want kids to Great understand. Great messaging for kids. That there's really a whole is. lot of resilience in there. Now the other one, I'm going back to when she was born. So we have this flashback. We're going back. And it deals with a lot of migration issues because mom is telling Ian, she's very curious and she's asking her mom, her mom is telling her all the stories about where she came from. Mm -hmm. So because the iguana is native to Latin America and Brazil. So she's telling her all of those stories about Brazil and Ian, Ian is asking the questions that kids will ask today. Why did you come here, mom? If Brazil, if we had all those rivers, we had all those tall trees, we had all those beautiful things, it's fresh and nice. Why are we here? And so mom gets to explaining to Yanni the whole idea of why are we here. And I, 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 I used it because the iguana is not native to the Virgin Islands. And so many of us are in America and we are not native to America, but we are contributors. So you go to the Virgin Islands and you will see pictures of the iguana almost everywhere you go. All of the tourist stores you step in, there's going to be a soft toy of an iguana. But the iguana is not native. But it is an icon in that place. So I just wanted children to understand, I'm hoping that teachers can actually get those messages out in those books. Well, but I think it's important mm -hmm. what you did because uh, a culture is not a landmass. Exactly. A culture is not in the rocks and the dirt and the trees. Mm -hmm. um, a culture is in the people. It is in the and, people. Uh, the, the Caribbean is such a, a, a phenomenal example of how mm -hmm. culture develops on its own yeah. because it doesn't really have much of a quote native population. That's right. Those islands were settled from people throughout Equatorial America, mm -hmm. South America, Mexico, That's uh, right. uh, the, the North America, mm -hmm. and then of course by the Europeans, right. by Africans. Mm -hmm. it, it is a an island yeah. melting pot. Yeah, it is. And much like we are so very proud of our own continent here mm -hmm. in the United States because that's where we come from. 
Yes. We come from everywhere, everywhere, from the islands, from Europe, from Africa, from every quarter. Exactly. And it is something that we have always been incredibly proud of, yes. but it seems to be muted in, in today's world mm -hmm. a little bit. And we don't focus on it a lot. Exactly. And the story of migration is not a story about one group of people migrating from one place to another. Mm -hmm. The story of migration is the story of humanity. That's we are right. a migratory species. Mm -hmm out of Africa, through Europe, over mm -hmm. to Asia, into the United States, That's right. from the West mm -hmm. and from the East. That's right. That's right. So, guys, check out Yanni sharing that story of what it is like to, to question, to, to say, question. where are we all from? Yes. Why would you leave from here and come to mm -hmm. here? And when we were primitives, there were practical reasons, That's better right. water, mm -hmm. better climate. That's right. Now that we have airplanes and, and trade and all of these mm -hmm. things, there are other reasons. Mm -hmm. And but there are always there we are on the move. That's right. We are on the move and Iani tells that story. It sounds like very well. <laughs> so um, yes. So, and uh, what are readers saying? What are the kids saying when they when the, they get a the hand? The kids are well one of the things one of the kids said to me, I I'm they could imagine. So the first one they're saying I could I could imagine what was happening so they're painting those pictures so I'm glad I was able to put in enough descriptions so that they could actually think of Ian is swinging like I, I have a, an example in here where she is moving from branches she's balancing off like people on stilts the moko jumbies so the moko jumbie is something that is the Caribbean every carnival in the Caribbean is going to have a steel dancer and so they're seeing that in there and so they can make that connection as well as we have that image in their heads. And for the mainland kid who doesn't know what a steel dancer is, they have that opportunity to look it up. Who is a steel dancer? What does that mean? What do they do? And so um, the whole idea is for children in the Caribbean to be able to read that cultural literacy, to be able to read things with their culture in there, but at the same time, students on the mainland and everybody else to experience other cultures and to be able to, to actually relate to their own cultures. So in Florida, they could say, okay, what are the trees that are native to Florida? What are the animals that are native to, to Florida? What animals do we have here that are not native to us? We can think of the python. So this is just, it's way beyond just where it was set. It's just universal all the universal themes as well as the universal concepts that kids can learn so i'm, I'm hoping that teachers can actually get into their classrooms it is from everything mm -hmm. this uh children's books are are, are uh first of all children's books are literature it they, is they, this it is, is the beginning of, mm -hmm. of building a literary mind mm -hmm. and literature does one thing better than anything else it it, it should invoke conversation it should, yes. And, and, and sounds like that is what you're setting out yes. to do, and that's what students are finding mm -hmm. in it, and that is awesome, and she's going to flash that card at me, because that's mm -hmm. my shut up card. Yes. So, guys, we've been hanging out here with author Martha Watts. You can find her on Amazon and social media as Auntie Marcella. You can also find her as Martha Watts, and she's got some other books that you guys are going to want to check out, especially if you're into education and you're in the educational system, because she's got some really good workbooks and things. We're going to drop links down below so you can find her work, uh, both her fiction work for children and her educational uh, development work. So please check out the links down below. In the meantime, thank you to Famous Faces of Funnies, Krypton Radio, Space Coast Comics, Indie Originals, our great friends at Hearts Helping Others of Central Florida, and our great friend Josh Bauer at J. Bauer Art for all the art that's on our set this weekend. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for watching, for tuning in. We've been hanging out with author Martha Watts, the author of The Adventures of Iani. That's right, Iani. That's right. I have no idea if I got that right, but we're going to go it with it for right, right now. It awesome, right. good deal. It Guys, right. stay tuned in and stay logged on and see who we're hanging with next. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank that you for awesome. having me. Yes, I like it. Yeah, I like it. Really